My name is Matt Huffman, I'm the state representative from Lima, Ohio, the great city of Lima, Ohio, and Allen County. And I want to thank everybody for coming here today. Uh, this is, um, I, I know we, uh, press conferences are not in short supply in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, this is my fifth year here, my first press conference. So I want you to know that I take, I take all of your time, especially the press and the other folks who came here, I take your time seriously. And I'm doing this because um, we're going to be introducing what I think are, is going to be significant legislation in terms of uh, changing our educational system uh, in a significant, meaningful way for both taxpayers and parents and students. Uh, and rather than introduce a bill and, and have everyone uh, chase after us as to what that means, I thought we'd start off by explaining what it means uh, and then uh, we're going to be introducing the, the bill shortly, uh, as soon as uh, next Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Um, what I want to do today, uh, and we'll try to move through this swiftly, is I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of what uh, the legislation is, the, the, uh, not the details, uh, because that would take a long time, uh, but the framework of that, and then I've asked a couple of representatives to make some comments, and then we have the most important people here, uh, uh, parents, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, school choice and, and what it's meant to them and uh, why it's important. Um, and again, I'll start off with the framework. Right now, as, as you know, we have the Cleveland and the <coughs> Choice Scholarship Programs. Uh, they have different uh, elements to those, and, and uh, those, I think, have been very helpful to both the state financially and the parents and students. We're going to combine those programs, and we're going to have one statewide voucher program. Uh, that, that's the first significant element. The second uh, significant element is there is going to be no cap or limit on the number of, of vouchers in the state of Ohio. Uh, obviously that's an issue right now with that choice scholarship and um, we don't want uh, an artificial cap to be in the way of uh, allowing this program to be successful. Uh, the third and I think probably most significant change uh, in terms of, of the eligibility for the vouchers is the, uh, we are abandoning the failing school model. Um, there, there, and there's a number of reasons for that. I think the most significant thing about this is I, I think it's, it's really divisive for the educational community in Ohio to talk about this school district uh, not doing well or uh, failing schools or the teachers aren't doing well. We know, we all know that when students don't do well, it's for a variety of reasons and not necessarily because of the location uh, of their house um, or all of the other reasons that may be pointed out. Um, we know also that um, as a practical matter, this isn't a, a, a situation where at the time fiscally the state can extend these vouchers necessarily to everyone. Um, and, and so the, the artificial restriction, if you will, right now um, is that it's going to be restricted based on income. Now, the, uh, what, what really comes down to is there are many people who have, because of their financial means, can choose to go to whatever school they want to. Uh, they can choose to move wherever they want to, and many can't. Um, this voucher opportunity will allow folks uh, of low and middle, come, uh, middle income to make a, another choice, or perhaps have many choices based on the private school models that are available. Um, and I know one of the answers or one of the questions that you're going to have right now is, well, what's the number? And we're working on that, but um, our, our first working number right now is that a family of four uh, that is making less than uh, $60,000 is going to qualify for this voucher. Uh, that number may go down to $40,000. What we want to do uh, ultimately, uh, and what we're going to do, let me make that clear, is this is going to be a revenue neutral bill for this budget. This is not going to cost the state of Ohio money uh, in this budget year. And that's significant, I think, for all of us in making sure that this framework uh, gets established. Um, the other significant change, by the way, is that ultimately this is going to be made available to current private school students. Now, how quickly that becomes um, feasible, I don't know. Uh, we're, we're working on how those numbers are going to be phased in, and that's going to be part not only of the work we have been doing and are going to be doing in the next few days, but also as we vet this through, bill through the committee process. The amount of the voucher uh, is going to be 80% of the 
mandated uh, state share. And that's going to amount to about $4,650, which is actually, in many cases, a little bit lower uh, than what the current voucher amount is that private school students, but in, of course, in, in many cases, uh, it's above, especially in the case of the, uh, the Cleveland School students. Um, and that is, uh, that's a, is going to end up being somewhat of a savings to the uh, um, state, but the real purpose of doing that is we want to be able to make clear to people that, and, and especially to taxpayers in the state of Ohio, that the use of private schools for students is going to be financially going to be a better model. And, and, and again, I want to I want to emphasize the two pillars upon which this program rests. And one is it's financially good for the taxpayers, and we're giving parents and schools choices about for on their education. This isn't about saying one school system or one school is better or worse. That's going to be up to the parents to decide because in many many cases. Uh, the public school may be the superior choice or the private school may be the superior choice. But that's not going to be for the state to decide on behalf of parents. Now, the, I, I guess probably I think the thing that most people are going to be interested in this, the members of the public, there's a lot of educational folks here and they've been doing battle on this uh, for, for many years, but I think the public is going to be interested in this element of this system. If someone receives a voucher to go to a private school, uh, for example, if, if you enroll at a, a private school, that may be $3,000. And I know most of the high schools are a lot more than that, but most of the K through H, or many of them are below that. If they go in, it's $3,000, and they receive a $4,650 voucher. That extra $1,650 is going to be put in an educational savings account on behalf of that student. And that student is going to have that account in their name, and through the years, if they're able to save money by um, year to year, uh, that money will accumulate, and ultimately that student and parent can use that money uh, not only for high school, uh, which may be more expensive, but ultimately for uh, post-secondary education at an Ohio institution. Uh, it's going to be Ohio College, university, uh, secondary, post-secondary type training of that person's choice. Um, this is a good way to keep kids and, and uh, students here inside the state of Ohio. Um, I want to be uh, extra careful again to say that we're working with these numbers uh, to make this budget neutral. Um, and uh, we, we've uh, been fortunate enough to have Bill Kipe, uh, KEIP. Uh, who some of you may recognize that name, he was the budget director under uh, Governor Rhodes. We've been working with him uh, and his knowledge of uh, not only the budget but the educational system in order to, um, to make this a, a, a uh, again, a budget neutral event. Uh, I, I don't want to discount uh, the fact that we also are going to be including the special ed uh, vouchers, which were nearly passed uh, a couple of years ago, it was Senate Bill 6. And that also is included as part of this because, again, that's an additional savings to the state. It's, 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 it's a good thing for the taxpayers, but it's also a good thing for the parents of, of those folks uh, who would use those special education vouchers. Um, and and I, I'm, I'm, it's not, I'm, not only, I'm not talking about that for a short period because it's not important, but I think um, that's better known to most of you and to most of the public. Um, we have a, a few people here to speak today, and I don't know if Senator Faber is uh, willing to come up and say a few words, but I know he's a busy guy, and uh, if, he's, if he's able to come up and say a few words on this uh, subject, I'd love to have him. Senator Faber. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I want to just, uh, first I want to give a tribute to uh, Representative Huffman. This is the kind of out-of-box thinking that we need to do in Ohio to make sure we're moving Ohio forward for Ohio's kids. And, and this is the kind of program and the kind of ideas that I think uh, can help us get to where we're going. Um, as, as Americans are fond of choice, uh, you have the remote and all the channels we get to pick, surely American parents can make good choices for their kids and where their kids go to school. And this heads us down that road. It helps us give moms and dads the ability to help make those choices that are going to empower uh, their children's future. And so for that reason, I am proud to be a sponsor of this bill in the Senate, and we'll work closely with the House sponsor and one of the chief draftsmen, Matt. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thanks, Keith. Thanks for coming by today. I appreciate this. Yeah. Um, the um, and you know, Keith's a good friend of mine, and, and as a leader in the Senate, very fortunate for him to have uh, his support. Although I don't think, uh, given his his background, uh, that was a, a very close, very long putt. Uh, so it's great to have him here. Um, we have, I have a lot of friends up here today, and, and I'd like to have all of them speak. And uh, it's often said in the State House that everything's been said, but not everyone has said it. But we can't do that today, guys. Um, but I did ask a couple of folks uh, to speak, one on, on um, our side of the aisle and, and one on the Democrat side of the aisle. Uh, Bill Patton is here from Cleveland. Bill, if you would come up. And uh, Bill's uh, very interested in this issue and, and wanted to talk a little bit about how this has affected his district. <clears throat> I want to thank uh, Representative Huffman and folks from the other side of the aisle because it was a unique uh, opportunity for me to be inside the room helping to fashion policy rather than outside watching policy be fashioned. So I want to thank you for that opportunity. Now, for me, uh, we have an educational emergency in Cleveland. Uh, it's a tragedy. Seventy percent of our schools are not performing. Parents are using whatever methods, like down in Akron, and I'm sure we're all aware of that to figure out a way how to educate their children. In this case, it's another tool in the toolbox. It's not an us versus them. It's at the end of the day about children. And for me, uh, that was a unique opportunity. I'm gonna take full advantage of it. So you will hear a lot about uh, my ideas on this legislation as we move forward. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and I also have uh, Tina Regner from uh, Akron. Uh, would also like to uh, illuminate. Thank you. Uh, I'm Representative Christina Rogner, and I'm from Hudson, Ohio. Uh, and school choice, I think this bill is it's a fantastic bill, whether you look at it from a macro perspective or from a micro perspective. Uh, looking at the macro perspective, mm -hmm. what we're doing is we're introducing competition. And every time competition has been tried, it will increase quality and it drives down costs over time. Now I know in the short term we're looking for this bill to be revenue neutral, uh, but I do believe in the longer term as this starts to grow and build that as schools compete for these children, their, their, their quality is gonna come up and their, their prices are gonna come down. So I think it's a great thing from a macro perspective. Now from a micro perspective, um, what does this mean for like families and students? These families and students met, who have never had a chance before to select the education which is best for them. Uh, now, <clears throat> this choice, now given the income parameters, they probably never have had this choice before and they know what is best for their child and what school fits that child uh, best, much better than the state does. So from a macro perspective and from a micro perspective, I am just fully supportive of this bill and uh, I think it's gonna be great. I want to thank Representative Hoffman for his leadership on this issue. Uh, this is not an incremental change. Uh, this will be truly seismic, uh, and uh, this will be both significant and meaningful in a very positive way for education in Ohio. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks for coming this morning. Appreciate it.